Hey Finksters and welcome to this tutorial where I want to show you how to generate a random graph with Python. So first of all, first things first, what is a graph? So let's level the playing field. A, gra a graph according to Merriam-Webster dictionary is a collection of vertices and edges that join pairs of vertices according yeah, to the, yeah, the join, join pairs of vertices to a graph basically. Yeah, so you have like um, you, you have the vertices like here the blue dot, then you have um, the edges this black line and the edges connect each edge connects two vertices okay so it's a uh, like in comparison to a hypergraph hypergraph where can e each edge can connect n vertices so an arbitrary number of vertices but for a normal graph like an edge can connect two vertices and that creates a network um of entities you can say okay and th so this is a graph very simple so if you have vertices you have edges and the edges connect vertices and this can be for example in the facebook social media graph where the vertices are the users and they are connected via friendship relations so facebook models the global friendship graph also internally using th this uh, this data structure okay so with vertices and edges so the next question comes what is a random graph and so now this is a bit different, um, given that you have a finite finite number of vertices n. Okay, so you have n vertices and it's a finite number, it's not infinite obviously. There's also a finite number of graphs that can be generated from those vertices, okay? So you have a finite number of vertices, so then of course you can, I mean, there are only so many uh, possibilities to, to create a graph out of n vertices, okay? And then ultimately so you will so that's a finite number of total graph you can possibly generate okay so like we have this this edge between those two vertices and if you would add an, another edge here then this would be another graph then we could uh, create another graph by adding an edge here we can then remove this edge here and so on okay so we have multiple so we can we can generate a huge number of uh, of different graphs but it's only finite, finite, okay? And a random graph is then just one of those graphs which is generated by a random process, okay? So we have like, say we have 10 billion possible graphs and we just select one of them randomly, okay? And this one graph is then a random graph. And uh, if you have a random process that, that selects out of those like uh, finite number of possible graphs, the random process just goes over them and selects one and grabs it and this is a random and then this is a random graph okay and uh, so you want to have um you want to have the, this random process that selects so you want to somehow construct a graph that is um uh, so that the probability distribution uh is um even okay so it's it's like uh, so you have a probability distribution over all possible graphs and uh, that's best case would be it's flat so all graphs are um, equally likely and this probability dis distribution describes how each graph is selected by the random process okay so and uh, in most cases if you refer to random graphs then people assume that uh, that you talk about the Erdős Renyi random graph generator okay so I just tell you how to write this so this is how you will write it okay so we have this Erdo Erdős, who was a mathematician, very famous. Ren Yi, I honestly I don't know who this is. I know only Erdős. Yeah, he's a very very famous guy, guy in graph theory. But okay, so those two uh, have created, have um, invented this random graph generation model. So this gives us a model to generate a graph randomly out of this number of possible graphs. And uh, an important property of random graphs generated under this model is that given a set of vertices and a number of edges, all possible graphs are generated with the same probability. Okay, so this is this is like the the challenge. Yeah, so if you would generate, if you say you create a random graph by just you have n vertices and you add random edges, but if you do this, then most likely you won't end up um, generating a graph that is. Uh, so that the graph generation process is uniformly distributed okay so that the because because then some graphs are much more likely to arise than others for example yeah so for example the graph with one edge between two vertices it it can appear like n minus 1 different it has n minus 1 different instances of a graph with one edge because you can have an edge between each pair of vertices like uh, even more so you can n times n minus 1 different uh, possibilities to 
I had to create a graph with one edge, but a graph with zero edge is only one possibility. So you want to like uh, have a, a equal num equal pro uh, a uniform probability so that um, this this graph has uh, that you just created has uh, same probability as any other graph in this random uh, in this like forest of possible random graphs. Okay, and here's uh, how the algorithm works. Very simply, let's open the OR app so I can draw it. So we, we, we start with n vertices, say five vertices, and they are unconnected. And now we go over each possible edge. And we include this edge with a certain probability into the graph, okay? So we have a, po like, there are a lot of possible edges here, yeah? So, like, let's, let's fully connect. So first we start with a fully connected graph, okay? We connect all possible edges with each other, okay? So now this one would be the fully connected graph with fi five vertices, okay? All pairs of vertices are connected. And now we have to decide for each. So we have a probability threshold, say 0.7, something, yeah, 0.7. And now we select each each edge only if uh, with probability 0.7, okay? So now uh, we create a random number. If the random number is uh, smaller than our probability threshold, then we include the graph, uh, the edge, otherwise we exclude the edge, okay? So we have some axis, we have some, so there are different ways, okay? So we do this for all edge, edges and then we obtain the final graph that is like only the graph with the edges we have included, so where the probability was met. And uh, so the runtime of this algorithm is, um, uh, so I mean, take a guess what is the runtime of this algorithm? Yeah, if you have m edges, then you have the runtime is uh, is uh, the runtime complexity is proportional to um, the number of edges to m. Okay, so we, we, because you have to go over all edges, and I mean, if there are n vertices in the graph, then you have n squared possible edges, more or less, a bit less, but yeah, like it grows like n squared. If you if you like double the number of vertices, then you will four um, x the number of edges in the graph. Okay, so it's a squared um, runtime complexity. And there are only two parameters where, uh, over which you have to care. This is the number of vertices and the number of edges and the probability threshold. Yeah? And um, yeah, in Python, you can simply generate a graph using the network X framework. Okay, so now you know the theory. It's often I, I focus on the conceptual part more because I find that the, that the uh, theory is much more, um, important than than the concrete uh, implementation because implementations can change but the theory doesn't actually change okay so say we have n equals six so we have six vertices in our graph we have um, 0.5 uh, probability to include an edge and now we need to import the network x library so we have import network x and in particular we go into the generators package and just get our import graphs. Okay, and basically let's make it even more spe specific. From this package, we only import now the Erdos Renyi graph generator. Okay, so this is a particular graph generator you have to import. I mean, you can look it up, you can even uh, follow the link in the des description below and just copy and paste the code. And now you can create a graph G with the constructor Erdos Renyi graph. There are also other graph generators in this random graphs packages and you can check them out, but this one is the, like the most mostly used, the most uh, popular one. And we put in N, the number of vertices, we um, pass the parameter P, which is the probability of an edge to be included. If it is 0.5, then we will approximately have half the edges in the graph if it is like uh, point two, then we have only a fifth of the edges in the graph and so on. Okay. And now we can print G dot node. So we have the, now we have already generated the graph randomly and you can print G dot node and um, you can print the edges of the graph. Let's see what the output is. So this is just the output from my last. Okay. So let's execute this again. Okay, you see we have like six vertices as we want to have 
They have, uh, they have identifiers from zero to five included. And then we have the edges. Yeah, we have an edge between zero and two. We have an edge between zero and four. We don't have an edge between zero and uh, five and zero and uh, one, for example, okay? So like how we more or less have only half the edges um, of the fully connected graph. And this is how you can like play with the probability. If you have a probability point one, we will have less edges, okay? We have only one edge. If, the, if you have a very high probability of say one, then we should have the fully connected graph, okay? So we have much more edges here. Okay, this is how you can play with the, with the par arguments. You can even have a very ha huge graph with 9,999 vertices. Actually, it's also a small graph with 9,000 vertices, but now it takes a bit longer because it has to go over say 10,000 time, times 10,000, which is like uh, 100 million different edges. So it has to perform 100 million comparisons. So it's, of course, it grows very, very quickly. So these all graph algorithms, they can quickly uh, kill you in terms of runtime complexity. If you have a large graph and you have squared runtime complexity, it will already be too much um, for many real world graphs. I mean, real, real world graphs like the Facebook graphs, they can have billions of vertices. I mean, we are talking of billions of vertices. If you have squared runtime complexity on a billions, on a graph with billion vertices, then you have like billion times billion operations, which is huge. I mean, it really can take forever then. Um, okay, so I mean, we won't wait here, but it but it will terminate sooner or later. Uh, let's let's skip this. Okay, so this is actually how yeah. If you if you visualize one of the generated graph uh, graphs, it looks like. Let's go here. It looks like this. Okay, so nothing special. It's just a random graph. Okay, and um, so then there is an alter alternative with NumPy. Very quickly, I want to show it to you just for the ad more advanced graph. Uh, guys here, you can import the NumPy library, you can create an adjacency ma matrix and uh, random run rand int. Uh, I first I first write it then I explain it to you and and so this is a shape. okay we cre we create a matrix, a square matrix with n vertices. yeah so n can be then for example 5. And um, that's it already. I mean, that's already, now we have adjacency matrix. Okay, let's execute this. And here's where you see the matrix, okay? So we have like um, the, the, the value at position, um, so, the, so the value at position i, j, um, indicates whether there's an edge between vertex i and vertex j okay so if you have for example um so we will always have an edge um if i and j are the same because this means that we have an edge from vertex 0 to vertex 0 we have an edge from vertex 1 to vertex 1 from vertex 2 to vertex 2 from vertex 3 to vertex 3 and we don't have an edge from vertex 4 to vertex 4 okay so this is like a, a mistake so you need to ensure that all of the dio dio uh, the the diogeny Diogeny, uh, that, that these entries uh, where i equals j are actually ones, but otherwise this will this method will also work. I mean, it gen just generates a random matrix. Okay, so this is how you can create a random matrix. It shows you then. I mean, if you you have a one, if there's an edge between the two vertices represented by the uh, like ith column and the jth row. And if it is, if there's zero, that this means that there's no edge. Okay, so this like this this is called the adjacency matrix, and this also shows you whether two vertices are adjacent to each other, which means that they have an edge between each other. Okay, good. But this de behavior is non-deterministic. If you execute the same code on your machine, then you will see another result, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, okay. So and that's that's already it. I think that's enough for today. Thanks for watching this video. Um, if you want to to boost your practical skills a bit, then you should start uh, doing more and more code projects because, uh, like, practical code projects improve. There's nothing nothing as powerful as doing practical code projects to improve your Python skills. So check out my free webinar where I show you how you can actually do practical code projects and getting paid for learning to code. So this is like the perfect uh, environment to to thrive in coding. So check out my free webinar. I give a link in the description below and uh, see you in the
Uh, webinar. Bye.